Things change every day in the NFL. ADP is constantly shifting, so we don't really know how the first three rounds of fantasy football drafts are going to go. But this is how they should go. If you can't wait to draft a team, well, you don't have to. Underdog has got you covered. You can jump in the action right now and draft a best ball team and win money. Take advantage of your knowledge and draft the best team possible. Just download the Underdog app, click on the link below, and sign up. Make sure you use promo code ENDGAME to take advantage of the deposit match that you get. You know, I mentioned how things always change. Well, we have some Texans receivers who are not going to make this list anymore because... Stefan Diggs is joining them in Houston, so you aren't going to see some of those other names like Nico Collins or Tank Dell. So who did make the list? Well, let's start with the 1.1. Who is it? Well, for me, it's Christian McCaffrey. I know there's always risk taking a running back at the number one pick, especially a guy with as much wear and tear as Christian McCaffrey, a guy who the last two seasons has stayed mostly healthy and has had a lot of touches. But man, the upside is here for Christian McCaffrey. Checks every box. If I've got the number one pick, I'm gambling on him staying healthy again because if he does, he's going to smash. No arguments there. If you're somebody who likes to take a receiver early, who is the number one wideout for fantasy? I think it's CeeDee Lamb this year. Now, you correctly nailed this, Chris. You said that Lamb could have his best season, and he did. And somehow he might actually do better this year. Look. Cowboys have done nothing to address the running back position. They just let Michael Gallup go, and they haven't added anybody of note at receiver. We could somehow see C.D. Lamb actually post better numbers, so I think he belongs right here at the 1.2. I agree, and at the number three, I'm going Tyree Kill. This is a guy who was basically dominating in every aspect up until week 14 when he hurt his ankle, and then he had a slow end of the season, but... When he's healthy in this offense, we know Tyreek Hill has a kind of upside that can not only win you weeks, but win you a championship. I'm taking him with the three pick. You know who isn't the number one receiver, at least by ADP anymore? It's Justin Jefferson. I think this is low enough, though. The number four overall pick, I'm still taking a chance of a guy who absolutely could be the number one receiver in fantasy. You worried about Sam Darnold or rookie quarterback? Well, go back last year and look at the numbers that he put up without Kirk Cousins when he had guys like Nick Mullins and Josh Dobbs in there. Yeah, I think Jefferson is fine, and I am still happy to get him here. Yeah, and I'm still happy to get Jamar Chase with the number five pick. I know it feels like he probably hasn't quite lived up to our expectations, but that's mostly because either he, Joe Burrow, or both have been hurt. So I'm going to bank on both of them staying healthy, playing a full 17 games, And if they do, they're both going to smash. But especially Jamar Chase has a kind of upside I'm looking for as a top five pick. Now, middle of the first round at pick number six, it's okay to go running back if you're getting B. John Robinson. Look, he didn't quite break out in his rookie season. No fault of his own. Let's blame Arthur Smith, who is no longer there, by the way. And remember I mentioned Kirk Cousins? Yeah, he is in Atlanta. They got a legit quarterback here, a new offensive system. This could be it. This could be the key to unlocking Bijan. So I have no problem taking him this early. And I have no problem taking another running back, and that is Brees Hall this early. Loved him as a rookie. Said he could have a top five finish. Looked like he was headed that way before he tore his ACL. Obviously, last year, mostly a down year. I know he came on strong late, but that was really, you know, because he was getting eight, 10 dump offs a game. He really wasn't that good as far as like productivity goes. But we're going to see a fully healthy Brees Hall, and we might see a fully healthy Jets offense. Aaron Rodgers hopefully healthy. I like a lot of the moves they've made this offseason. I think we're going to see a Jets team that's going to compete for the playoffs, going to give Brees Hall way more touchdown chances. So a healthy Brees Hall, I'll happily take him in the middle of the first round. Now number eight, let's go back to a receiver, and you might not be sure who fits here. How about Amon Ra, St. Brown, the sun god, has proven he is a first-round talent for fantasy. You know, a lot of people thought he was just kind of a safe pick. Where's the upside? Well, how about 1,500 yards? How about one of the leading receivers in the NFL again? And yes, this offense will continue to revolve around him, especially that passing game that is going to continue to rely on him because, look, he has proven he is a target magnet. He has nowhere to go but up. So I'm happy with him as my number one receiver. Yeah, and you might say number nine is too high for a second-year wide receiver like Puka Nakua, but I say no, it's not. I'll take Puka Nakua at number nine. 1,400 yards as a rookie, broke the rookie reception record. 
And now he enters this offense in year two where he's clearly the number one guy here, not Cooper Cup anymore. Matthew Stafford looked like his old self last year. As long as he's healthy, he's going to continue to sling it to Puka. Sean McVay loves Puka. This is a good offense for him. I think he asserts himself and takes an even bigger step forward in year two. So I'll take him inside the top 10 at number nine. Is it too soon to go back to Garrett Wilson in the top 10? I don't think so. Again, you might have been burned to some degree if you did take him late first or even early second round last year. We were all over Garrett Wilson, not knowing that Aaron Rodgers' Jets career would last exactly one series. But gonna take a chance that that won't happen again. And it's almost amazing that Wilson was able to put up some of the games he did with whatever they had at quarterback, including Zach Wilson, Tim Boyle, and whoever else. So Garrett Wilson belongs here. I think this year is going to prove it. I think Jameer Gibbs is going to prove that he is an elite fantasy running back, and I'm taking him at number 11 here. I liked what I saw down the stretch last year. Early in the year, sure, it was David Montgomery's backfield, but once Dan Campbell got confidence in Jameer Gibbs, he started to get more and more touches. And when you look down the stretch, and especially in the NFL playoffs, it seemed like Jameer Gibbs was the guy Dan Campbell wanted out there, especially in the bigger situations. I think we see even more of that in year two, kind of like Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara back in the day with Jameer Gibbs in that more valuable Alvin Kamara role. So just inside the top 12, I've got Gibbs at 11. And round out round one, if you're in a typical 12-team league, how about A.J. Brown? Now, it's easy to think that Brown was disappointing last year because toward the end of the season wasn't much of a factor. The whole Eagles offense and especially their team, talking about the playoffs, well, they let down, but it wasn't AJB. He is still an elite wideout. That offense is still one of the best in the NFL. And remember, there was a lot of kind of misconnection here between the offensive coordinator and Jalen Hurts early in the season. Brown thrived despite that. So let's kind of wipe the recency bias off the map. Forget the last few weeks of that season. And remember, he's still a stud and could carry your team on a weekly basis. Speaking of a player that carried your team on a weekly basis last year, that was Kyron Williams, at least when he was healthy. I think he does it again this year. I'll take him to start the second round, pick number 13. Again, in the Sean McVay offense where we know he wants to just rely on one running back if he can. It was Kyron Williams last year. It's probably going to be Kyron Williams again this year. And I talked about it. Stafford seems healthy. McVay is back. Sure, maybe he won't be as good as he was last year because he was pretty ridiculously good, but he's still going to be more than good enough. I'll take him with pick 13. And if you missed that on Kyron or one of the early running backs, or maybe you double tap RBs at the turn, why not go with Jonathan Taylor, one of the few true workhorse backs. This offense will still go to him. Zach Moss is gone. Look, Anthony Richardson being back, we talked about this throughout last preseason it's a good thing for JT. Don't worry about vulturing touchdowns and things like that. It just makes the offense better. It will get them near the goal line more often. JT will catch a ton of passes. We saw that as well. So he belongs this early. Yeah, now we get to the part of the draft where I kind of don't feel fantastic about all these guys. I feel like there's a lot of reaches here, but I'm going to reach on Chris Olave at number 15 because I think we could see the best Chris Olave we've seen so far entering year three. Last year, in the second half of the season, after a slow start, it seemed like him and Derek Carr got that connection going. Very strong second half of the season for Chris Olave. I think we see that the entire season this year. And the Saints have nobody behind them of really any consequence. Maybe they'll bring in a rookie. That doesn't scare me. Chris Olave should be an alpha target monster. So when we get to this point of the draft, he's got the kind of upside I'm looking for at pick 15. Like you said, it's hard to know which receiver do you really value at this part of the draft, especially with that Texans wide receiver room all shaken up. Let's go with the last true workhorse and a guy that can still be an elite fantasy running back, Saquon Barkley, who's now an eagle. Is this going to be good for his fantasy value? Is that even a question? Think about the offensive line he's run behind for the Giants his whole career. Think about the quarterback situation. There's no way this isn't a massive upgrade. And look, this might wind up being too low for Barkley at pick 16. And yeah, then again, I'm going to continue the wide receivers where I'm just looking for upside and opportunity. And I think at number 17, Mike Evans has that. We saw last year, it didn't matter that it was Baker Mayfield. In fact, it was good for Mike Evans that it was Baker Mayfield because he basically just either checked it down to Rashad White or chucked it down the field to Mike Evans. Evans just every year, 1,000 yards, 10 plus touchdowns. And every year he 
you know, kind of gets undervalued in fantasy. So here, pick 17, give me the upside of Mike Evans. And at pick 18, if Drake London is still on the board, I'm pulling the trigger with ease. And a lot of people wondering, are we going to overreact to the Kirk Cousins move? Is this going to be too high? Are we going to be too high in general on the Falcons offense? I don't think so. In fact, we might wind up being too low on London. This should finally be his breakout season. So many signs pointing to it. And so I like London here, and I'm okay taking him as my wide receiver one if I went RB in round one. And I like Brandon Ayuk here at number 19. Could we see him in a Buffalo uniform? Maybe. But I do think he's going to be back with the 49ers, and I'm totally fine with that. He asserted himself as the number one wide receiver in this offense last year. I think he does it again this year. Look, Debo a little bit older, Kittle a little bit older. Already talked about CMC. Maybe this is the year where he misses games. Let's hope not. Regardless, Brandon Ayuk in this offense has the kind of upside I'm looking for at this stage of the draft. At number 19, I'm taking him. And is Jalen Waddle deserving of a top 20 overall pick? Well, we've seen him fall lower than this in a lot of our early mocks and some underdog drafts, but he absolutely could return value at this stage because, remember, he's still one of the best passing offenses in the league. Besides Ty Hill, it's all Waddle. There's no other third receiver, tight end, or anybody to take up those targets. And Waddle does deserve a slight pass for last year. I know he didn't take a big step forward because he's battling nagging injuries. Well, he missed a couple of games, but he really wasn't 100%. So we're going to finally see him take that leap, I think, in year four. And then at pick 21, let's go with our first rookie. That is wide receiver Marvin Harrison Jr. Hopefully going to land in Arizona with Kyler Murray. And if he does, he's going to absolutely smash. He's going to have a kind of season we've seen from guys like Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Puka Nakua last year. Just an absolute monster wide receiver. Checks every single box. So as long as he doesn't fall to, like, I don't know, the Giants, he's going to clearly be a stud even in year one at 21 is where I've got Marvin Harrison. Next up, I'm going Michael Pittman at 22. I'll admit last year I was too low on him. I had concerns about Anthony Richardson as a passer. Uh, wasn't sure if the Colts were really sold on Pittman as their future number one receiver. Those questions were answered. I know we only saw AR a little bit, but even with Gardner Minshew, who I don't think we can even argue is somehow in any way better than Anthony Richardson will be, he still put up his career best season. Pittman is an alpha. Pittman belongs in round two. Yeah, then right at the end of round two, I think I'm willing to gamble on Devon A. Chan here at 23. We know the upside, right? He can win you weeks by himself. We also know the downside. He's going to be sharing with Raheem Mostert, and he's small. He could get hurt again. But I think at this point of the draft, I'm willing to gamble on that potential upside, especially if I don't have an RB1 yet. I'll go ahead and take A. Chan with the 23rd pick. Gamble, he stays healthy and helps me win many, many weeks this season. That doesn't seem like that long ago. I was saying DJ Moore should be an early second round pick. He was going to be huge again, regardless of who the quarterback was in Chicago. Well, now they got Keenan Allen and now they don't have Justin Fields. And you know what? I'm still high enough to take DJ Moore at the end of round two at pick 24 because he's still one of the best receivers in the game. And Caleb Williams, if he is the type of talent that everyone expects, He's still going to be the number one receiver on a team that's going to pass a lot. And now is starting to look pretty dangerous. So although you can't be as high on him as you were before, I don't think we should let him drop any lower than this. I also don't think we should let Debo Samuel drop lower than early third round. I've got him at pick 25. Sure, I talked about it with Ayuk. Ayuk, probably the number one receiver here. But Debo is used in so many different ways, like screens carries that he still has tons of value and i think he's led the nfl three straight years in terms of yards after catch uh, per reception so you know you're getting that from him the touchdown upside in this offense i think early third round debo samuel has the kind of upside i'm looking for at pick 25 now 26 let's go with another rookie that's right it's malik neighbors time it's going to be really interesting to see where he lands but also how he's valued some people are saying He's as good or maybe better than Marvin Harrison Jr. will be, and some people are saying this is way too soon. I feel like third round is just right because no matter where he is drafted, he's going to be that team's number one receiver. And I know this sounds like hyperbole. Maybe it's a lazy comp, but honestly, I see shades of Jamar Chase in his game. I really think he's going to have a huge rookie season regardless of who he plays for. 
And at 27, let's go for a running back on a new team, and that is Josh Jacobs of the Packers. This has to be a better situation than last year with the Raiders. He's going to be in that Aaron Jones role, already talking about catching more passes, a much better offense, going to have many more chances to score, going to have way more open lanes to run through. So Josh Jacobs in the third round, if he's my RB1, I'm fine with that. At the 28th pick, I'm going to go with a guy who's maybe going a little under the radar, Devontae Smith. That's right. In fact, you'll probably be able to get him a little bit later than this, but I'm not going to take a chance. This is another player, as I mentioned with A.J. Brown, who should see better results with a more consistent offense. Devontae Smith is a stud receiver. He would be putting up even bigger numbers if he didn't have another guy like A.J. Brown to contend with. As it stands, he does, but he will still be probably the best number two receiver in the game. And then at 29, I got another running back who I'd be more than happy with as my RB1 that's being a bit undervalued, and that is Rashad White. This guy was a top five running back last year, and what has really changed? The only thing that's changed with this situation is Dave Canales, the OC, is gone. I mean, is the new OC going to give the ball to Sean Tucker and Chase Edmonds? I don't think they're going to invest early draft capital in a running back. Rashad White is once again going to be the workhorse running back in this offense. And you don't need to take him here normally. Normally, he's like a fourth, fifth round guy. But this is where he should be going. And at pick 30, you want to know where the value is at? How about elite wideout Devontae Adams still being here? And you can get him in round three. Look, Raiders may not have the most dynamic offense. And there are questions about their quarterback position. But there were a lot of questions last year between the very short Raiders career of Jimmy G and then Aiden O'Connell. I don't want to say that there's going to be some massive upgrade because I don't expect that. But really, it can only be better. And Devontae Adams was still really good. No new threats to his target share. Josh Jacobs is gone. This offense will still run through him. And I still think he's going to be among the fantasy elite. Then at 31, let's go with one more running back who seems like he's undervalued, whose situation has actually gotten much better, and that is James Cook. Not only did we see in the second half of last season when OC Joe Brady took over that they were a more run-heavy team, but now Stefan Diggs is gone. I mean, what is this offense really going to be? It's going to be a lot more James Cook, hopefully a lot more James Cook in the passing game as well. Touchdown upside in this offense. They're going to need James Cook this year. Another guy being very undervalued. You can get him much later than this, but I would happily take him here as my RB1 where he should be going. And then at pick 32, another great value running back, Travis Etienne. He was going higher than this last year. Look, there's some rumors that they want to get him some rest, Tank Bigsby get more involved, whatever. I mean, I was a big Tank Bigsby guy last year, and then I wasn't when I saw how bad he was. And plus, I'll actually believe Doug Peterson's words when I see it happen. Etienne will still be one of the leading rushers in the league. This offense will still try to establish the run because, look, they're losing some pass catchers. Ridley is gone. Trevor Lawrence maybe is not the generational talent that we thought he'd be. But Etienne is still a guy who's got tremendous value, and you can get him late in round three. Then at 33, let's go with our third rookie, Rome Odunze. We've already talked about Harrison Jr. We've already talked about Neighbors. Why is Rome Odunze being valued so much lower than these guys? He's every bit the prospect that Harrison is. I think he's a better prospect than Neighbors. Sure, it's going to matter where he lands, but it's going to matter where all these guys land. He shouldn't be going a full round, round and a half later than Neighbors. I got him here where I think he should be going. You're not going to have to take him this early, but for me, he's the number 33 player. At number 34, Zay Flowers sliding into round three. He is the number one receiver for his team. No, it's not the most pass-heavy team, but Flowers as a rookie was impressive as expected. We should only see his numbers go up. And so I agree he doesn't have the ceiling of some of these other receivers we discussed, but he has been very consistent, and that's also why you can get him at this range. And then at 35, let's go with our first tight end. That is Sam Laporta. Definitely has to be considered the tight end one, really, in all formats here. No reason to think he's not going to be great again. The Lions haven't done anything in terms of pass catching. In fact, Josh Reynolds is no longer with the team, so he should see even more targets. We know this is a good offense with Jared Goff that's going to utilize the tight end. So if I'm going to take a tight end early, it's going to be at the end of the third round with pick 35, Sam Laporta. And then to round things out, pick 36. We're still not going to Houston, but... T. Higgins might be a guy that somehow benefits from the Stephon Diggs trade. Will he get traded like he wants? Will he go to Buffalo and be Josh Allen's number one receiver? Look, worst case scenario, he's either the number one target on a new team or he's the number two behind Jamar Chase catching passes from Joe Burrow in Cincinnati. T. 
T. Higgins is going to be slept on. He still has a ton of upside if he stays healthy. Now, you may notice that only one tight end made the list and no quarterbacks. Look, if there's a number one quarterback, it's probably a guy who just took a hit. Yeah, even before the Stefan Diggs trade, I had a hard time pulling the trigger on Josh Allen or any quarterback in the third round. Now there's no way I'm doing it. Fourth round would be the earliest I would start to consider a quarterback. And it would have to be because I don't really like anybody that's on the board. So when I can just wait and get guys like Kyler Murray, probably not pulling the trigger this early on a quarterback. I didn't have anybody ranked in the first three rounds at quarterback anyways. And I feel like at least right now to get a starting quarterback you can count on, you can wait. And so I don't think there's any reason to try to force anybody, even if it's Jalen Hurts or Josh Allen this soon. Be patient and you'll still wind up with a passer you like. That's how we think the first three rounds of fantasy drafts should go right now. But who are all of the elite running backs who could carry the load for your team? Well, we broke down our top 10 RBs right here.